It's TK Friday, and I'm thrilled to have you join me on the joy of editing. Today, we're embarking on an exciting journey, a deep dive into the blend of panels found in TK9. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. We're doing another deep dive today. This is part one of a two-part series. We're going to explore the blend if panels in TK9. Now, I do have PDF notes for you, as you can see on the screen right now, that will cover the things that I'll be going over today. And I think these notes will be a valuable asset to you. So make sure you download these notes. I'll have a Dropbox link in the description below this video. Click more to open up that description and scroll down through and you will find the PDF Dropbox link. And by the way, if you don't yet own the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, you can save 15% off the TK9 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. Use my promo code DK15. That gets you 15% off of everything. Not only are you saving money, but you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly when you use that promo code DK15. So thank you all for using my promo code. I really appreciate it. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Now, there's two different uh, blend diff panels inside of the TK9 multi-mass panel. Now, if you'll notice this button here, if I click on it, this blend if is for creating masks. Right now, you're seeing a mask. This is a lights one mask. This blend if panel is designed to create masks like you see on the screen right now. Now, let me go ahead and close this and let's look at the other blend if panel. So let's click this button right here. And you notice these symbols look the same. This one's in green and this one's not. So when we click on this one, you'll notice this one says edit blend if. This is for working with blend if right on the layers. And they're both very useful. Next week, I'll take a deep dive into this panel. But for now, let me close it. And I'll click on this button for blend if mask creation. Now, I'll be going over this in a lot of detail today. This is a deep dive. And then next week, I'll go over the other Edit Blend If panel. But don't forget to download the PDF notes. They'll be a great reference resource for you. Now, the first time you open this panel, you are greeted with a Lights One mask. And basically, it's a black and white image of the photo. Blend If was used to create this Lights One mask. Now, notice this row of buttons up here. See this first button right here? If you click on it, you'll notice in the image you see this gradient here. Now, this is the way this gradient actually looks when you see it with a Lights One mask. I want you to observe it as I go and click through some of these different lights. Next, let me click on Lights Two, and notice how that gradient has gotten more narrow. The light areas are the areas that are selected. Now you'll also see the effect obviously on the image. Now let's go to a lights three and see how it gets more narrow here, the light area. Now we go to a lights four. This black and white gradient is a great visual aid to determine what is happening when you're going through these different buttons. Now we go to a lights five and it's even more narrow. And now we go to a light six. And now let's check out a darks one. Now we notice things have shifted to this side because this is the dark portion over here. And it's in light because we're selecting a lot of the darks. That's darks one. Now here's a darks two. And keep watching that black and white gradient. Here is a darks three. See how it keeps shifting over here to the left. Here's a darks four. Really narrowing in on those really darker tones. And now here's a darks five. And now a darks six. And of course, we also have midtones. We have midtones one. And you can see this area here is only the midtones. And now we go to midtones two. And watch the image. It'll get a little bit lighter because that's a midtones two. It's still only midtones, but it's a lighter version of it. And now here is midtones three, even lighter. But we're only selecting these midtones right in here. And bear in mind, of course, you know this because you watch my TK Friday videos, but we're trying to create masks so that we can do some editing on our photos where we only want to target certain areas. Maybe we only want to target dark areas or light areas or mid-tone areas. So that's what masking is all about. Now, you might be asking yourself, what are these buttons here? 
one, two, three, four, and five. Well, these represent different zones in the image. So here's zone one. These will be your darker tones. And you can see that on the black and white gradient. That's where zone one hits. Now check this out when I click on zone two. See, it's only, that's zone two right in that area right there. And of course the image, the light areas are all hitting in zone two. Now here is zone three. I'll click on that. And this is in the mid-tone area. It's more narrow than mid-tones one, two, or three. Watch this black and white gradient here as I click on mid-tones three. See how the mid-tones widen out more? So this is a more narrow representation of those mid-tones. Just bear that in mind. And now let me click on four. This is zone four. See how it's shifting over? These are lighter tones. And now here is zone five, and it really shifts over that way. But I want you to notice something. See these sliders right in here? By the way, these circles are called handles. But notice how everything changes here when I click on, say, lights one. See how the slider changes? Now lights two. So observe that. Now, you see this bar across here? I call this a gradient bar. And it's very similar to this black and white gradient down here. You can see the area in red that's getting affected for a lights two. All these tones in here will be getting affected. And it graduates off as we move to the edge here. Now here is a lights three. See how it's getting more narrow? Now you may ask yourself, do I need to use this black and white gradient? No, it's just a visual aid for you. You can shut it off very easily right here. But remember, it's a tool. If you're learning what's happening, putting on that black and white gradient will really help you to see what is going on. Because sometimes when you just look at the image, it's hard to tell what's going on. But when you turn this on, you can say, oh, I'm hitting all these tones in here. Because remember, in a mask, we are making a mask. White reveals and black conceals. So these really light areas are getting selected the most, and as it gets more into the darker gray tones, they're getting selected less. There's really good feathering in here, so you'll get a really nice mask out of this. Let me shut this off for now. But bear in mind, this is really cool, because now if I go over to darks one, notice how we shifted into the dark areas here. Here's a darks two, here's a darks three. See how that red area, these are the zones that you're hitting right here, or the tones, I should say. And now if I go to, say, like a zone three, you can see right there, there's your zone three. Here's your zone two, right there. Here's your zone one. Here's zone four. But notice these sliders are moving around. And remember, these are called handles. And here is zone five. It hits right there. Let me go back to lights one for now. Now you know you can toggle off and on this black and white gradient, which is a visual aid, just by clicking on this button. The button next to it is another visual aid. So if I click this on, we get a red overlay. Everywhere you see the red, that is the area that is being selected. Now, some people love the red overlay. I don't really use it. And this is another toggle. You can click it again and toggle it off, click it again, toggle it on. Now, for me, I just like looking at the mask because I know the light areas are going to be the selected areas. But you may find that using the red overlay is very helpful. Now, notice when I click through the lights how that changes. Here's lights two. And again, just be looking for the red areas. The areas in red are the selected areas. If it's not in red, it's not selected. Here's lights three. Here's lights four. Here's lights five. And again, just the red areas. And also notice that these sliders are moving around as I go through here. Let's try darks one. There are all your dark tones in red. Here's darks two, darks three. You get the drift right four. And then we could go to the zones and see where those zones are hitting. That's zone two. Here's zone one. Here's zone five. Here is zone three. And if that helps you to determine how you want to make your mask, then use that. I'm going to go ahead and click on it to toggle it off for now. Now this next button, the double arrow, is a toggle. If you click it, you can see your image, which is very helpful sometimes when you're trying to make a mask. Say like I wanted to look for the dark areas. I wanted to burn down the dark areas. So sometimes I may want to see the actual image itself because when I'm just looking at a mask here and let's say I want like darks one, darks two. I'm trying to find a dark tone that I want to burn. Here's darks three. And I may say, well, is that 
the area I want, well, I could go ahead and click this toggle to see the image and say, yeah, I think that's pretty good, or maybe I want a Darks 4. So that is a nice little button to help you to really look at the actual image itself and compare it to your mask. So that could be very helpful. And now let's explore this button right here. And by the way, if you hold your Alt or Option key down and hover over any of the buttons, you will get information as to what those buttons will do. So that could be pretty handy. Now you have to click the X to shut off that information. But let's click on this button. When I do, I get a color picker. And so what I can do here is, if you've watched my TK Friday videos, you know I like to use zone masks. This is a zone mask type feature with blend if. So I could come here, say I wanted to burn dark tones. So I could come and look for some dark tones, like maybe right about here, give that a click. And you can see that's where that point is. It's very dark. So down to the bottom, this is dark and it gets lighter and lighter and lighter as it goes up. And it's more saturated to the right, less saturated to the left. But right there, I'll click OK. And now I've created a mask. Let's call it a zone mask because I'm picking a certain zone. And you can see right here by my sliders that there is that zone. Now, again, I can always click this button to see my image again and see what I'm looking at here. But here's something else we can do. Remember, the circles are called handles. We can adjust this. We don't have to just take that zone for what it is. We can tighten that zone up. So if I take this top slider here, this is working with the highlight areas here. And if I click and drag this to the left a little bit, see how I can tighten that up? Or I could take this shadow slider and maybe drag it in a little bit just to tighten my selection area up a little bit. Maybe right like that. So we can adjust this. And, you know, I can adjust these guys too. If I want more feathering, here's a little tip for you, tip alert. If you want to get more feathering on your blend if zone mask, let's call it a zone mask because it really is like a zone mask. So if I take this top slider and I move it to the left a little bit, See how this kind of gets grayed down a little bit. I'm getting a little bit more feathering on the edges here. And I'll take this bottom slider and I'll drag it to the right a little bit. And see how I can feather that. And notice these tools right here in gray. These are refinement tools. One of my favorite adjustments is the levels adjustment for refinement. So let me go ahead and click on levels. And maybe lighten this up a little bit by taking this highlight slider and dragging it to the left a little bit. You see how I can lighten that up? If I move the midtone slider to the left, I'll lighten it. If I move it to the right, I'll darken it up. Of course, the shadow slider, you could pull that in if you want to. But I think that's good right there. But let's say I want to do a little bit of burning right now. So I pick the zone that I wanted with this button right here. And then I fine-tuned it a little bit with these sliders by adjusting the handles. And now I want to output this. So this is your output area. And if you watch my TK Friday videos, you know I always use these buttons here. But I want to do some burning. And if I click on the left side of this burn tool, I'll get a 50% gray layer. If I click on the right, I'll get a transparent pixel layer. I'm going to use the left side. And if I click on this, you'll notice I have a selection made with that blend if. And now I have a brush at 30% opacity. I'm set up with a black brush, by the way. And so now I can make that brush larger and I can start just burning. See those areas that I've selected? I can just really just paint across there. I'm painting with 30% and so I can burn that. So I am controlling the areas that I'm burning by using the mask that I've created. Now, if I option or alt click on this layer, we can see what that looks like. See how I'm targeting just those areas? The areas and dark are the areas that I'm burning right like that. Now, if I option or I'll click this again, we'll see the image again. Now, let me shut this layer off. Here is before and here's after. Now, I'm painting through a selection, so that means every time I lift my brush and paint again, I'll push more paint through and darken those areas more. So you have a lot of control here. Burning and dodging through selections gives you a lot of control. Now, notice I still have my selection, but let's come back up and go back into Blend If Mask Creation by clicking this button, and my selection goes away. Anytime you click on any of the masking buttons, your selection will automatically deselect for you. Okay, I'm back in the Blend If Mask Creation panel. Let's make another mask. This time, let's say I want to work on these lighter areas here in the foreground, so let's go ahead and click this toggle 
to see the image. Okay, so these areas right here. Maybe I want to lighten these up a little bit. So let's go back. I'll click this button again to go back to the mask. Let's go through some of the lights to try to isolate this area. So that's lights one. Here's lights two. And that looks pretty good, but I want to tighten this up. So I'm just going to let my eye look at this. So I know these areas right down through here are good. And let's go ahead and turn on our black and white gradient so we can see what's happening here. I'm going to take this shadow handle and I'm going to start to drag it to the right to narrow this range in here of the light area, right? So remember in this gradient bar, all this red area where it graduates off to is all being selected. So what I'm going to do is take this shadow handle on the bottom here and I'll start to drag it to the right and see how I can tighten that area and watch the black and white gradient. See how this is shifting over like this and right like right there, I think is really good. Now I did start out with a luminosity button and I like to start out there, but then I like to come down to these sliders and then work on my selection even further by adjusting these handles and right there I think I like it now you see that black and white gradient there if I were to output this to a dodging tool you don't have to worry about shutting this off because it will not go on your mask in case you were wondering hey will that get on there no it won't it goes away but we can do some further refinement here with these tools that are in gray I already showed you my favorite levels but we could use curves as well so let's click on the curve button and when I'm using curves, I like to use the target tool. So let me click on the target tool. So if I wanted to lighten this area up a little bit right here, I could click and drag up. You see that? I can lighten that up or darken it, whatever I want to do here. So that's curves. And by the way, you can always click your back button to go back a step. So that was curves. You can use that. You can use a black brush. So let me click on the black brush. And the black brush is for painting. You can go ahead and paint on here. Now, right now, You'll notice black is not 100% black because I'm at 30%. So I'll type my zero key and I can just paint black on areas that I don't want affected. So simply you can paint on there. Let me step back a couple steps and get rid of that. And then you have a white brush. If you want to reveal a whole area, you can paint with a white brush and you can paint with various opacity levels. That's 100%. If I go to say like 40%, see it will be, won't be like solid white anymore. So you can paint with brushes to refine your mask. Let me step back a couple steps by clicking this button on my combo panel two times. And now we come to this button for mask the mask. What you need to do when you're using mask the mask is use a selection tool like the lasso tool. I'm just going to type my L key. And let's say I only want the foreground area like right around in here. So what I'll do is I'm going to click here and I'm going to drag like this and drag the whole way around. I'm not worrying about that black and white gradient down there because it will not be part of my selection. So we need to make a selection like that. Now I missed the little area. I could hold my shift key down and just circle around that area and grab it, okay? And then when you click this button, you're gonna get a Gaussian blur dialog comes up like this. You can give it feathering if you want to. And in this case, because I'm inside here, I may just give this a little bit of feathering, maybe like, I don't know, that's too much. I can see the water right around there, maybe six or seven pixels, click OK, just to feather that edge a little bit. And now what I can do here is output it. And so let's say we wanna output it to, let's just output it to a brightness contrast adjustment. And so now what I can do here is adjust my brightness, maybe lighten that area up, because I said I did wanna lighten it, so I can lighten that a little bit and then maybe give it a little bit of contrast, something like that, maybe lighten it up a little bit more. Now let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. Now let's take a look at this mask by clicking this button on our combo panel. And as you can see, you do not see that black and white gradient there. So it was taken off for us, so that's pretty nice. I'll click the double arrow button to see our image again. And now let me go ahead and click this button to get blend if mask creation. Now let's look at some more refinement tools. And by the way, these refinement tools aren't only here in the blend if mask creation, but they're also found in all the mask creation methods in the TK9 multi mask panel. But being that this is a deep dive video, I wanted to really hit all the different buttons today. Now we're going to come to this next button right here.
This is a fill button. So let me say I want to select dark tones. Like here's darks one, darks two, darks three. Okay, and see this cloud here and these clouds over here. Say I don't want those. I could grab a lasso tool. I'm just going to type my L key. I can draw around this cloud. Hold my shift key down. Draw around these clouds over here. Now I have two selections. So now if I click this fill button, the field dialog comes up and I can choose contents here. Right now it's at 50% gray. I don't want that. So we can click this drop down and I'm going to fill that with black because I don't want to select that at all. I'll click OK. And once I click OK, a Gaussian blur comes up. Now right now there's no feathering on it. I could drag this slider to the right and add feathering to it. I don't need it. I can just click OK. But that's what that does. You can just fill areas in and just get rid of things. So that is the fill button. And now we come to this last button with the three horizontal lines. We'll click on that. These are some more refinement tools, tools you won't use that much, but they're there if you need them. This first button is for burning. The second one is for dodging. This one is to blur your mask if you need to, something I very rarely would ever do, probably never. And then this button, you can invert the mask if you decide you need to. And this, you could reset it to where you started out with before you made any refinements. So let's check out the first one. That is the burn tool. So let's click on it. And you'll get a burn tool set to shadows at 50% opacity. You can change this opacity if you want to. Uh, but what happens here is if you paint over dark shadow areas, they will become darker. You see that as I paint over them. So I can tighten this mask up by painting over those darker areas. Or if I wanted the light areas to go lighter, I could go to the dodge tool. So we'll click on the dodge tool now. And now when I paint over light areas, they will get lighter. You see that it's set for highlights. The exposure is set for 50%, but I can dial that down to say like 10% and maybe not give it as much, you know, and then build that up slowly. So you could further refine with burn, dodge. And again, like I said, if you ever feel the need to blur your mask, you could click on this button. A Gaussian blur dialog comes up. It's set for no feathering right there or just a very small 0.1 pixel, which is basically nothing. But then if you want to blur that mask, you could drag this radius slider to the right and you can blur it if you ever felt the need to do it. But I don't really use it. I'm going to click cancel and that gets rid of the blur. And then if you ever feel you need to invert your mask, you can click this button right here and invert it. Click it again and invert it back. And again, if you want to reset this to where where you started before you made any refinements, uh, you could click this button right here and it'll reset it. See, all that stuff I've done is gone away. All right. And now it's back to the original, just like a Darks 3. So that's all of those buttons. If you click on this X, you'll go back to the original refinement buttons. Now this area right in here, these are your output buttons. Now, once you've created your mask and you're happy with it, you've refined it, you've done with it, whatever you need to. Right now, this is like a darks three mask. And let's say I just want to output this to a curves adjustment layer. I would click this button right here. Now I'm not going to go over all these buttons because if you watch my TK Friday videos, my full edit videos, you'll know a lot about a lot of these different buttons. So I'm not going to get into those right now, but let's just say I want to output this to a curves adjustment layer. All I need to do is click this button right here and you'll notice there's that mask. And if I click the double arrow button on my combo panel, you can see there's the mask, the darks three mask, click this button again, you'll see the image again. And then I could do things like pull down, on this curve and just darken up those dark tones. Okay, so that's one thing I can do. I want to show you one final unique thing when you're making a mask from Blend If. So let me shut off this layer. Let me come back and click this button to open up the Blend If so I can create a mask. And let's make another darks mask. Let me come and go to a darks four. So I'm targeting those dark tones. Now, this will not work, what I'm going to show you now, if you do any kind of refinement. This is Blend If, right? What if I don't want to send this mask down to a layer? Let's say I want to use a Curves Adjustment layer to darken these dark tones, and I don't want to use a mask. Here's something unique I can do here in this Blend If mask creation. If I hold my Shift key down and click on Adjustment Layer Outputs, like, for instance, Curves, I'm holding my shift and I'll click on this button right here. And you'll notice I have a curves adjustment layer. This little symbol lets us know that I have blend diff on here. 
And next week, we're going to get into Edit Blend Diff. But if I click this Edit Blend Diff button, if you look at the gradient bar, you can see there are the dark tones that I'm targeting. But now what I can do is I could come and take this curve and pull this down and darken those tones that I've targeted. You see that? But it's doing it through Blend If and not from a mask that I created by using this Blend If button, right? Because you can see that's a white reveal all mask. So remember that. That's a unique feature of this Blend If right here. You can create a mask for a layer. You can paint through selections from a mask you created or if you hold your shift key down and output and use these adjustment layers you can just send it out as edit blend diff on the layer but remember you can't use any refinements they will not get picked up in the edit blend diff on the layer so that's important to remember let me go ahead and close this blend diff panel by clicking the x now next week we're going to be working here I'll click on this Edit Blend If button. We'll take a deep dive into Edit Blend If. We'll go over this entire Edit Blend If panel. Target, Exclude, Gray, the gray checkbox. What's it mean? These color checkboxes. This adjustment right here. The trash can. We can save Edit Blend If presets. So we're going to go over that whole thing. But that's coming up next week. And I'll have PDF notes for you covering everything we'll cover next week. And by the way, I did make a TK9 deep dive playlist. So every time I make a deep dive video, I'll place it in that playlist. It will be easy for you to find. So don't forget about that. There's a new TK9 deep dive playlist. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed part one of my Blend If deep dive here in TK9. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon click all so that you'll receive all notifications and then each time i upload a new tutorial you'll get notified about it i want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with dave kelly and i will see you all right here next time but until then happy editing